Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics. And real quick, we're going to talk about madness because you guys are going completely mad. And mainly, it's from resumes. Now, as you guys probably already know, right, there's there's an old saying, you know, when, when you do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, that is the definition of madness. Because you're constantly spinning your wheels but never getting anywhere, right? And for, for the veterans out there who are spending 90% of their time giving out resumes, filling out resumes online, and doing all that, you're missing the bigger picture. First of all, can you not see that you're spinning your wheels? Pull yourself out of that tunnel vision you have right now. Pull yourself out and look at it from a from a you know non-subjective point of view. You are spending days and days and days tossing around paper to people you don't even know. There's no relationships there. There's nothing. It's a sheet of paper. You're throw you're basically throwing garbage. Here, take this garbage. Take my garbage. Go throw it somewhere else. Go shuffle this paper somewhere else. And that is why resumes are so ineffective. And the more time goes by and technology goes by and, and the competition gets better, but also businesses and companies become more savvy about picking their people, the resume is going to go the way of the dodo. There, there are far more better things out there that you can use to display your skills and abilities. But let's let's break it down to the most key core essential fact is that a resume is a sheet of paper. And whether it's on a computer or on a sheet of paper, it does not get you the job. Period. It's a sad, hard truth. It's kind of taboo. But you guys have to understand that a resume does not get you a job. A person gets you a job. A, there, somewhere down the line, someone is going to approve you. Now, 90% of the time, that's because they have either gotten a good impression of you or those who they trust the most or who, are, who have been appointed in positions of trust, like an HR rep, have given them enough information for them to say, yep, I'm willing to risk a little bit on this guy. So, knowing that, how can we stop going through the madness of filling out resumes and going to job interviews and, and kind of just randomly picking companies and people to talk to with no real focus? And how can we, how can we kind of you know, do something outside of the norm? One is, do your research. Figure out exactly what it is you want to do. If you're, if you're looking for a job just for money, people are going to get that. They're going to see that, and you're going to be like everybody else. You're aiming for mediocrity, right? Nobody, nobody cares about that, right? No, people are looking. Employers are dying to find that X factor. And, and in order to show them the X factor, you have to take initiative. You have to do stuff that nobody else is doing. So, for example, when you go into your interview, well, okay, before you go into your interview, do some research. Find the two or three companies that you're really excited about that you would really die to work for. Because if you're not that excited about it, then, then it's not a job that you're really going to excel in. You're just going to it for money. But if you go to a job that you're really excited about, it's going to fuel you to do all this other stuff, which one of those things is research the company. Find out what its direction is. Find out who the key players are. Find out what problems they're facing so that you know who you can talk to, to either, you know, maybe who within your network, who do you know that knows somebody who works in the company or who do you know that does work in the company? How can you get some sort of face-to-face -face conversation with them to get more information, right? How can you have like a, a take them out for coffee or, or dinner and 
kind of pick their brain and figure out what are the things that the company is facing and how will your skills and abilities and imagination and personality be able to fit in there and help solve those problems. Once you know that, once you can put yourself into their place, now you're doing something that's extraordinary. It's not ordinary, it's extraordinary. It's not normal, it's abnormal. So that when, when you go and you talk to the, the, the hiring manager or the CEO, whoever that person is that can get you the job, they're going to see this. They're going to say, wait a minute, this guy didn't just come in with a resume and throw it at me. This guy came in and he know he understands me. Not only that, but he's asking about me. What are my issues? What, what, what do I need from him? Wait a minute, where did that come from? And so, so this is going to, it, it's, it's a whole different, from the employer's point of view, a whole different perspective. They're seeing something completely different that they haven't seen before. So it's like, it's like when you have, you know, uh, a bunch of beads in front of you and they're all black and then you have one red bead and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Right? It sticks out. You are that red bead, right? Where did that come from? Well, hold on. Now you've got my attention. Tell me more, right? And so this is where if you did your research and you really thought about how you could apply your skill sets to that company, now what you can do is you can go to them and say, hey, okay, based on what I can do, I've, you know, written up, here's, here's a, you know, a plan, a 90 day plan where we can go in the first 30 days or so, you know, I'm going to get to know all the key players, get to understand how the company works. The next 30 days, you know, I'm going to um, put some key processes in motion. And then in the last 90 days, we'll try to build some metrics or, you know, whatever it may be, you, you're going to tailor that towards whatever job it is that you're going for. When an employer sees this, they're going to be like, oh my God. Because most people, when they go in, that 90% of the people who didn't, who, who actually got a, you know, a call back and got to go in, they're just terrified to be there. They don't want to be interviewing. If you can give them something that's out of the norm, something that's extraordinary, they're going to, they're going to be super surprised. Now, here's another thing that this is, so that's just one tactic, right? I want you guys to start thinking outside of the box. What can you do? Maybe you go to an employer and you, and you give them like, you know, a lot of great things, but they're like, you know, you know, times are really tough. You know, we don't really have, um, capital for, to, to, to fulfill a position like this right now, you know, maybe come back later. 90% of people will consider that a no and they just leave. You, you're not 90% of the other people. Something tells me that you want more. Something tells me you want to be more. Something tells me that you want to show them what you're worth. Because once you show them what you're worth and once you show them that you're worth more than any money they can throw at you, they're going to hire you. So what do you do? You offer to volunteer. You say, hey, you know what? What if I were to come in on a trial period for three to four weeks? I work for free. I show you what I can do. Then after that time period, you guys decide if you want to, if you, if, if this is a good fit or not. And if it isn't, we both part ways. I've gotten a little bit of experience in the field in, with a company that I love. And you guys got a little bit of, you know, extra help. It's a win-win situation for you and for them. And I guarantee you, if you put everything into it, at the end of that trial period, you're going to get something out of it. And I'm not saying, now granted, you know, there's that, that, that little chance that maybe they really just can't afford you. That's fine. I guarantee you that wherever you go next, they will give you a recommendation. Wherever you go next, you can take the experiences that you had in that company while you're volunteering and apply it and you put it on a resume and, and use it to your advantage, right? You have to look at things differently. You can't do 
what everybody else is doing because it's not working. 90% of, of the people out there in the workforce who are trying to get jobs are doing it the wrong way. And anybody who were to just think a little bit outside of the box is going to get huge results because it sets you apart. It makes you, it makes you stand out. And I know as a veteran myself that all of you guys are coming out of the service with great experiences, great knowledge, and and you know that you're you have worth, but you want to be able to articulate that. You want to be able to translate that to the corporate sector. You have to one of the biggest traps that you have to stay away from is falling into the madness that everybody else is doing. Stick out. Be your own. Do something original. God forbid you actually go to the actual company and talk to people and meet the the hiring manager or the CA, CEO, right? God forbid that you actually did something that nobody else does. Because I guarantee you that's going to strike them. That's going to get their attention. Once you have the attention of people in that, in that position, you, you can totally capitalize on it. The problem is everybody's trying to get the attention of paper and computers and, and, and low-level HR people. People who have no, no ability to truly hire. So... Anyways, I hope this video was helpful, and I'm sorry if I ranted a little bit, but, um, you know, what, I, what I'd like to leave you guys with is, what is the one thing you could do today? What is the one, um, you know, maybe it's, maybe you can sit down and, and think of what are the three jobs that you would be best suited for. Maybe you could sit down and say, what are the one or two companies that i really like to work for? Maybe you could sit down and say, what is the one or two things I could do that's outside of the box? that nobody else in my field is doing to set me apart from the competition, to get some attention, right? To get some people looking at me, to see in my value, right? Another thing, just as a, as a little tip and then I'm gonna go, is who out, who, how many of you out there have written your own ebook, have your own website, have, have, a, have a portfolio? These are all things that are simple and easy to do that I guarantee you 90% of, of the other competition, veterans, civilians who are out there trying for the same jobs as you are, haven't done. It sets you apart. It makes you different. So I hope this is helpful, and um, I'll catch you later. Take it easy.